Thank you. So, hey, my name is Andre. I'm a software developer at Red Hat, also a student right here at this very faculty. And I'm a huge keyboard nerd, as might, you might have noticed by now. Um, as a disclaimer, I'm going to use the P word, so watch out. Preference. Everything in this hobby is about preference. You may not agree with all, of, uh, all that I'm saying and all this stuff. Uh, you may like different things, and that's all right. You know, there's, there might be more interesting flavors, but people still like vanilla, all this kind of stuff. Um, as to why mechanical keyboards, let me start with this. Uh, how many of you guys do have a mechanical keyboard, by a show of hands? <laughs> OK. How many of these have a Cherry MX switches? Quite a lot. All right. <laughs> so why mechanical keyboards? Well, options. More specifically, options in looks, because the uh, keycaps are compatible between each other. You can mix and match all this kind of stuff. Options in feel, which bo depends both on the switches, because the switches have a different mechanism and stuff. And also cases, because there's cases designed to be more uh, light on the touch and stuff, all, all this kind of weird stuff in this hobby. Uh, the sound, there are plenty of people just obsessed with the talk as they call the, the, some kind of a sound and stuff. Options, layouts, plenty of layouts, and firmware, because most of the, um, I'd say more expensive as well, but especially the more like, open source uh, split, weird kind of keyboards use uh, open source QMK firmware, which is, you can set up anything you want. So, and yeah, open source, because some of the keyboards just are available anywhere. Uh, I mean, on GitHub or something, and you can just order the PCBs and build it yourself. Switches. I used this uh, amazing graph with um, emojis combined with each other. This is for these little things I'm going to pass. Try and, you, you can try and test this, see which switch you like as well. There's the cherry, the hole, because it's a rabbit hole once you go into the enthusiast switches. And then there's silent switches as well. And there's a linear one, the tactile ones, and the clicky ones. There's no clicky silent one. That's how you tell which way to orient this. So I'm going to pass this along, and good luck. But yeah, to sort of help you with this, the main difference you should be basically looking for for the linears is the non-cherry ones are usually more uh, smooth. While the tactile ones have a stronger bump, and the clicky ones just use a different click mechanism, so it's not much of a rattle, it's more like a pure click. So, some common misconceptions for switches. Uh, there's this, a lot of saying like, red is for gaming, blue is for typing, brown is for everything else, or for everyone. Um, most of these things are basically just some things to get you to actually buy some keyboard and figure it out by yourself. It's all about preference. I use reds or linears for, for typing and programming, all that stuff. It's, it's not that it's going to help you in any way. It's just preference. It all depends on which one you like. And since not everyone is able to just go to a you know, store and try a bunch of uh, switches or order like this switch tester, then it's kind of difficult to help anyone because everyone, everyone has different taste. So th then this sort of <clears throat> bullshit was made up to help you just figure out, uh, buy, go for it and buy a single switch. Um, off, and then Cherry MX switches, there's this thing that, uh, there's this issue that Cherry had a patent until 2014. So there weren't any other brands making these switches in the same standard as nowadays they are. And so Cherry, instead of innovating on new, newer switches and more like smoother switches, better switches, they sort of just went with marketing that we're the original ones, we're the ones that everyone is copying, and um, German engineering, so it has to be the best, right? And it's sort of falling off slowly, but people still have this sort of mindset that the others are a clone that can't be good, right? and they're Chinese. But yeah, nowadays, Gateron and other brands, most importantly, they innovate a lot and provide some better switches as well. And uh, also that mechanical means loud. This is a mechanical keyboard. I don't believe anyone from the backside can, can hear this. <laughs> never, mi never mind, I, I'm out. But yeah, uh, there, there's this sort of, you know, 
misconception that beep mechanical has to be loud, but there are specific silent switches which are even more silent than your usual membrane keyboard. And then the color coding, which is just something that works for the basic red, brown, blue, and other switches, but other brands then don't really follow it once you get into the more enthusiast switches. So also then the options are in layouts. You might have seen your usual 100% keyboard. I'm gonna ask you to raise your hand and then lower it the moment I go too small for you guys with the layout, all right? So everyone raise your hand. <laughs> all right. Does anyone need a 20%? Okay, that, that. so 90, 96, that's just, <laughs> okay, one hand. Just the editing keys sort of squashed together with the num numpad. A TKL, that's just the king, 10 kilos without the uh, numpad. This is FRL, F rollless. But watch out, this one also has a blocker instead of the Windows key, because some people think that's a very awkward place to have a key. So this one is a, a F rollless, Win keyless, 10 keyless, actually. Then there's a 75%, which doesn't have the usual fu function keys at all, or the editing keys. 65%, which is without the function, uh, function as well. That's quite a lot of people, okay. Now we delve into the 60% without arrow keys. You have to use the function layers to sort of use other stuff. Um, there's the Arisu and stuff for like slightly more ergonomic boards. There's the Ortho, which, okay, three more hands or something, okay. And that guy has a split that doesn't count. Uh, <laughs> then there's the splits. Usually what people end up with are smaller sizes because uh, once you go for ergonomics, you also don't want to stretch your fingers as much. So you use layers to sort of do all kinds of weird stuff. And then also you can 3D print some cases. Um, so you get stuff like this, or this is what I use at work, basically. Uh, yeah, it's like a skate park. And then you need manual for your manual, basically, for the layout you're using at the, at, 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 in your keyboard. But don't tell me you don't use a 40 percent. You can't use a 40 percent if you use this, you know. Like, and you only use two fingers. Just come on. Now your thumbs can actually do something, and yeah, it's manageable. And it's not a joke. These are these are some kind of jokey layouts, but the 40 percent actually work. So there's plenty of memes to go around, but yeah. And that would be mostly it for me. Thank you. So, any questions? Preference, again, <laughs> have to. How many keyboards do you have at home? I think I'm at eight you right now. Can you raise oh, I, oh, yeah, uh, I have, uh, well, how many keyboards do I have at home? I have about eight keyboards, so I can have one for each day of the week, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you can kind of sort of see the, the journey I went, when, you know, smaller, smaller, and, when you just have two keys, more code. Exactly. What is the best switch? What's the best switch? Um, preference. <laughs> so, do you find often uh, users which mix switches? Mix switches as in they have For example, the DS uh, AD keys. Okay. Uh, the switches in there. So some people use heavier springs on like the space bar and stuff, but that's not very common. I would say most people just go roll, roll with a you know, full keyboard with a single switch in the community. What do you think the best switch is? What do I think the best switch is? Right, I'm, a, I'm a big linear kind of guy, so I would say like maybe Gator or Oil Kings are my favorite right now. By the way, from the people that tested the switch tester, I'm not, I'm not sure how far it got. How many of you preferred the, the cherry ones? Okay, I think that answers a lot of your questions. <laughs> How about Jerry? Uh, there was a, yeah. How can you get a tactile effect in the foot switch? In what switch? A foot switch. switch. Can, can you make, so for operating 
Okay, like a clutch, vim clutch. It really goes to shit control and so on. Okay, I've heard of the vim clutch, but I don't know what it does. Yeah, it's a control that you can use to control the vim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard of the vim clutch that people use a vim, <laughs> a clutch, like for, you know, using your, uh, like when driving, to switch modes between vim and stuff, but I, I have no clue how those work, so. Do you know how to drive? Oh, I can use vim. I, I can't use, I'm not a driver, so. But I can't use vim. All right, if, if you guys have any, okay. Uh, when you switch from keyboard to keyboard, like how much time do you need to adjust to new layout or? As long as the boards are different enough, my brain just clacks, it works immediately. But as long, if, if the layout is sort of similar, like if I've split, uh, switch between the split and a normal keyboard, it just works automatically. Um, but yeah, if there's like, I have an ortholinear as well and that sort of messes with my brain because it's similar to a normal keyboard and a split as well, sort of, and yeah, that doesn't work too much, but yeah. I have a question. Okay. You have the Linux, which is working, for instance, in a mechanical keyboard at the moment. The non-mechanicals aren't usually linear, they're... Exactly, so that's why I'm asking, for the, for the Linux switches. Oh, yeah, I, sh I should have been re repeating the questions, right? Uh, sorry. Uh, well, so again, the question was, what's the differences between linear and? Linear, non-mechanical, and linear mechanical. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, usually, non-mechanical are not exactly linear. They're mostly membrane. Like, you know, like membrane are actually more tactile-ish because you have to pierce, pierce through the sort of you know membrane bump. So they're more more tactile-ish. So yeah, the difference is in the feel, but they're also mechanical world just don't feel as mushy, which can happen with the, with the silent ones because there are actually like some rubber in, inside the switch to actually make them silent, but they're still way, way off in feel to, uh, compared to a normal switch, like membrane, I mean. I have not tried. My girlfriend did some artisan keycaps, just like a little toast or something. Like you could do those, but I haven't tried like any pretty printed stuff. I did like a keychain stuff you can take at my booth, by the way. And yeah, all the other questions you could also I could answer at the booth on in E all the way that way. So I think we're out of time. We still have time. Okay, never mind. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you.